Hey guys, Mitch here with the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Tonar TC1020 condenser microphone and uh, so let's, uh, let's get started. Alright, so this is the Tonar TC1020 uh, condenser USB microphone and first off let's get the specs out of the way so that we can get on with the uh, test and I will pull up a picture of the specs it's got the polar pattern is like so and it's a 48 bit I mean 16 bit 48 Hertz kilohertz frequency response 20 Hertz at 20,000 Hertz it's got uh, there's impedance there's the signal to noise ratio and it's got a two meter USB cable which brings me to my first con of it which is it's an attached cable so it's not it's built into it and so we all know how wonderful USB cables hold up they hold up you know like really well so that's would be my first con because if the USB fails then I'm gonna have to open it up and it doesn't seem like it's very user friendly to open it up I don't see any exposed screws so I'm gonna have to if I would replace that I'll have to you know rip that rubber bottom off of it and um, go from there and so that is would be my first con um, but it can be connected via USB to Mac Windows and iOS devices if you have the camera connection kit it works fairly well two meters is long enough but I would have liked to have seen a removable USB cord you know just just in case all right, so there's one volume knob on the front, which is nice um, to control the overall gain of the mic. And then there is a headphone port on the front as well for direct monitoring. Um, the overall quality of the pot seems well. Pot is short for potentiometer, which just is the term they use for a knob or slider that it kind of divides the voltage. Think of a dimmer. You know, you turn as you turn the dimmer, you know, the a light gets brighter or or darker same thing with the this is what they're called a potentiometer and so it seems fairly well quality there's there's not a lot of jiggle which you know some some knobs and stuff have have some wiggle room and some jiggle you'll notice on some of the cheaper uh, MIDI controllers um, they'll have like some play in on this one seems pretty solid and so that's that's good I don't think it's going to just break over um, you know use um, you know just fair use I don't think it's gonna um, just break so that's good so the headphone jack in the front is a 3.5 millimeter jack and it is a direct monitoring port which kind of which brings me to my second con is because it's although it is good for completely no latency monitoring of the audio coming in from the microphone it has its drawback especially when using it with say an iPhone that does not have a headphone jack is because if I want to monitor what the audio is sounds like if I'm processing it with an effects then I hear the dry and the wet signal at the same time via the headphone jack and I don't have an alternative headphone jack to plug in now with my iPad since it does have a headphone jack I can plug the tonar in first and then plug the headphone headphones into the headphone jack and that will override the output to the system and it'll tell it okay use the tonar for the for the input and use the headphone for the output and so that's kind of a workaround and if you still have an iPhone with a headphone jack then that would be a workaround but as of right now if you if you're using it with your iPhone to record just note that you can't actually you can't unmonitor the direct input, which, you know, it's the same thing with the Fifine um, KB670 or KB760 or whatever that microphone was that I reviewed. It's the same same thing. There's no switch. I would love to see some sort of switch or something that I could turn off direct input or have a choice between direct input or USB audio. You know, that would be that would be a good good compromise that way I could have direct input if I needed it but then I could flick a little switch press a little button and it would turn and only monitor USB sound because sometimes latency is not an issue if I want to hear what the actual um, process sound is if I'm doing some sound design or 
you know, trying to re- record my vocals and I want to hear my affected vocals with it, you know, that would be good that way. Um, other than that, you know, it's, um, that's about all I can say about that. So that would be my con number two. Also, other than the intro, all of this audio has been recorded on the Tonar TC1020 microphone. So what do you think? Is it good? Good for dictation? I don't know. I will I actually don't know. I have to wait until I get it into the recording or into the software and uh, really see if there's any things. If I do any edits, it'll just be minor tweaks, levels, and stuff. I'm not going to do any any other kind of edits like that because I like to, I guess here, raw sound. Microphone reviews are very subjective, you know, if you have a noisy room, you can have a ex- really expensive microphone and it sounds like crap. And if you have a really, if you have micro, if you have a room that is treated and there's no noise and there's just, you know, you've spent a lot of money on treating your room and getting the sound of your room well, you can take a really, really cheap microphone and make it sound phenomenal. And so my room is not treated at all. Yeah, it's not treated at all. I haven't spent the time on that. If I gotta record anything and I want it, I want a good sound. I just go in my closet and shut the door, and you know that that works for me as of right now. I haven't been went to, through, you know, treating the room, and I haven't had and I haven't had any major sound issues. I'm sure I could definitely improve the sound, but just say it. All right, one more little housekeeping thing is I have you can see here I'm using audio share I have everything plugged in via the um, camera connection kit and it is monitoring the audio this audio is coming from my Lumix the Rode video micro from there but I just want to show you here in the screen if I go to settings so I get here by just hitting the hitting the microphone down at the bottom and then I go to settings if I go to hardware settings, I'll see a mic input gain. Now this is very important when using some of these USB microphones with your iPad or iPhone is when this gain right here is turned all the way up to 100, it is extremely noisy and it has a whole lot of gain. You want to bring that down. And so it's kind of a balancing act between the mic input game gain on the physical um, device and the input gain on the software that you're using and most software most iOS software will I'll give you that option it, this is here that's how you get to it inside of a of audio share whenever you go into AUM I will show you here you have you go over here to the little bars on the side settings and you'll see input gain and so once you mark it once then you can see it's still 70 but if I bring this say down to 62 close out AUM open up audio share go back to the settings here hardware settings and you'll see it's down to 62 and it's actually even defaulted even further down to 44 because that's what the settings in AUM was and so it actually reset that portion as well and so that's just kind of a little little thing to be aware of when you're using it. Same thing with on your MacBook or on your Windows. You kind of need to play. It'll give you some options where you've got kind of a software gain and the actual pot knob on the controller. And that's just something you need to um, be aware of. And it's kind of a balancing act to make sure that you get the the most sound but not an overabundance of gain, which could cause some... Uh, extra noise and distortion in your recordings all right so at this point now I am got the tonar right here and I have my phone right here and I'm just gonna come just do play my guitar a little bit and you can do a comparison between the two when I edit the video I will change out and let you know which microphone you are listening to but let's push record on the iPhone XR and let's push the re- the record on my iPad Pro which is housing it's is hooked up to the Tonar bring up oh uh, trusty here and uh
Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this you found this useful, you found the review useful. It gives you a little better understanding on what this TC Tonar TC1020 is all about as far as the sound. You know, I think it's a pretty good microphone. The, you know, it's a good budget um, friendly microphone coming in. Um, the prices, you know, vary, you know, around around 50 US dollars or a little bit less depending on where you get it and uh, the housing is nice um, it doesn't have any mounting options but it's got a nice rubber pad and it seems sturdy you know moving the table around I don't feel like it was gonna just topple over even though it is tall um, and it looks nice and sleek you know as far as the post processing most of the audio is right now I'm using the, the video micro on my Lumix but most of the audio in here has been recorded with this and all I did was just boost the gain a little bit um, with just the volume slider inside of Final Cut and the same thing whenever I was doing the guitar test comparison I just boosted the volume of the Tonar just a little bit just to make it just to rise the levels because I was um, recording it a little bit lower level and uh, yeah I will leave links in the description on where you can uh, pick this uh, this guy up it will be affiliate links Tonar did send me this to take a look at and review and so there is that um, I'm pretty happy with it I will probably uh, probably use it um, for you know for some things just uh, it's just quick and simple um, just leave it out on the desk it, it's not an eyesore and so just leave it out on the desk and when I need to just bam plug it in and you know record or take it out anywhere because it works fine with this without power and so that's that's good I didn't have any issues with it consuming too much power and not working with either iPhone or my iPad and uh, there you have it uh, like the video give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe if you're not already hit the little bell icon and PayPal or Patreon is in the description as well if you like to support content creators like myself and other than that, just share it on your favorite social media site, and I will talk to you guys later. About spilt my coffee. Stop.